all ever. It's secondary dominance. Oh my gosh, we're starting to get into some real music. This is fun. I'm saying that with great enthusiasm, trying to get you guys excited at the prospect of working on this topic. So let's just go back in time for a minute. Imagine you're a composer. And you're a composer and you're working in, say, a major key, let's say C major, and you're stuck, as I will show you when we share the screen. So we will count on your imagination as we share the screen. So you have the chords we've learned, and what you find out is, oh my gosh, you only have seven different chords. If you're in major, the last one, the first one are the same. And if we use seven cho seventh chords, you have another seven chords that we've learned, but they're just variations of the first. So basically, you're trying to compose music with seven chords, and each chord has comes in two types. And if you're in minor, well, natural minor, we still have seven chords. But we can add, you know, if we go to harmonic minor, whoops, where did I just go here? If we go to harmonic minor, we do change that chord. Whoops, there you go. And we do change that chord. So we have, instead of seven chords, you could argue that we have nine chords. But it's hard to imagine that we could write music for 300 years with only seven chords and their variants in major and only nine chords and their variants in minor. That just seems weird. It seems weird to composers too. So they start looking for other kinds of chords, other ways to add color to their music. And hence, we're going to come to our first set of terms. And for this, I'm going to switch my chair to the whiteboard. So, whiteboard, okay. So we have one word, which I'm going to write up here. And by the way, if if at any time, if you're confused, stop me. There's a word called diatonic. Does anyone know what the word diatonic means? And Sophie, are you with us? Yay, okay, because I saw you having trouble connecting up, and I know you're stuck in your room. By the way, are you doing well? Give me a thumbs up if you're doing well. We keep the thumbs up. Okay. Anyway, we're so happy you're with us. So who wants to tell us what the word diatonic means? And, and it, good. I have a, does someone have a word, an answer? Oh, I was going to guess. I think it's the notes that pertain to the key. Yes, the notes that are a key. So diatonic means, and this is not going to line up exactly because of the way it is, but the notes in a key. So if I'm in the key of C, it's the white keys on the piano, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. If I'm in the key of A, it's A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, but it's notes in the key. It doesn't matter if you're major or minor, it's the notes that are in the key. So we talk about diatonic notes, and this is a word that you'll hear we me use all the time, but it's a word that if you don't concentrate on it, just goes by and we forget what it means. It actually has very specific meaning, the notes in the key. And the notes that are not in the key are called chromatic notes. And it's interesting, chromatic doesn't actually mean not in the key. It comes from a Greek word, chromos. Does anyone know what the word chromos means? Have I done this lecture already? I'll do it 20 more times before we're done. Who knows what chromos means? Ah. Chromos is the Greek word for color. So what happens is composers have these, these notes that are the key, but they're just not enough co color. It's, it's so bland. So they look for ways to add color. And to do that, they use the notes that are not in the key. So chromatic literally means, let me see if, well, if I put this in a better place, chromatic literally means notes not in the key. So if you're in the key of C, all the white keys, there's seven of them, are your diatonic notes. The five black keys are your chromatic notes. In other keys, it's not that simple. It's still seven and five. If I say in the key of A, 
your chromatic notes are A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, and your notes are your diatonic, and your chromatic notes are A sharp and B sharp and C natural. So I'll just show that on um, on the screen. Let's change the share again. Go back to finale. So if I say A major. Then my diatonic notes are these notes. These notes. Um, that's my key. So my chromatic notes are anything not in the key. So that's, um, we, we should write this all in sharps. Um, let's see, I got A, B, C, D, so there you go. And there you go. And, um, let me see. There you go. And uh, there. Those are my five chromatic notes. So you can see that some of them, you, had nat you have to add naturals and things. These are the notes that are not in the key. These are notes that are in the key. And if you have a key signature that matches your key, anything with an accidental is chromatic. Anything without an accidental is diatonic. You have to have the right key signature for that to be true. So then you get a whole bunch of notes that Maybe you're adding sharps, maybe you're adding flats, maybe you're adding naturals, but these are the chromatic notes. So there should be five of them, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I've got six because I repeated the A sharp. There should be five of them in any key and seven diatonic notes. So far, am I making sense, everybody? I got one thumbs up. Okay, so that's our first set of definitions. And by the way, if I write a chord that uses... A, um, a chromatic note, we call that an altered chord. So for example, if I'm in the key of A and I write that chord, that's an A chord. If I decide to use a C natural, and a composer could decide to use anything. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But now that I've altered that, it's chromatically altered. Altered just means changed. But do you think musicians would use a simple one syllable word like changed when we could use altered, which is two syllables? Of course not. So we call this an altered chord altered chord because it has a changed note. We changed it to its a chromatic note. So it's chromatically altered or just an altered chord. So today we're gonna to be talking about a certain kind of altered chord. An altered chord just means it's got an accidental in it. It's got, we're adding some color. So we're gonna talk about a specific kind of altered chord. And today we're talking about chords that are in a circle progression. So if you remember, circle progression tells me that the root goes up a fourth or down a fifth, which is exactly the same thing. Remember, if I go up a fourth, I get a G. In this case, we go down a fourth, a fifth, I get a G. So I've got a circle progression here, a two chord to a five chord to a one chord. And that sounds like this. Let's just play it. I think this is set up to sound, I hope. Let me just quickly check my share and make sure I've got it set for sound. Okay, let's try it. So. Oh, come on, don't be evil to me. Give me my playback controls. There we go. All right, so let me make sure I've got audio set up correctly. I do, yay. So this is just a simple circle progression, a two chord to a five to one. And I'm gonna make that loud for you because that didn't come through very loudly. Um, Are you, there we go. So I'm gonna make it really loud. And um, let's just get that guy moved. Come on. Okay, so here's my two to five to one. All right, but you see if I'd write that over and over again, I mean, we do that in rock music a lot. We have three chord progressions that appear a lot. But even in rock and pop music, we actually find there's a lot more chords than three chords. And composers are always looking to find ways to add color. And there's an easy way to add color to this one. Um, D mi is a minor chord, right? This two chord is a D minor, D, F, A, D, F, A. Well, what happens if I just make it D major? You know, all I'm doing here is actually making the chord function better because now that F sharp is only a half step away from the root, like acts like a leading tone, it wants so badly to go up there. 
It really was so badly. So now listen to how much stronger it is. Yes, and there are lots of ways I could write this chord. This is a very common chord. If I'm in a circle progression, I change a minor, minor chord to major, and it's got more power. It's got more drive to it. Um, so let's just say, how could I name this chord? Let's think about it. Like I could just write a two with capital letters. Let's say it's a two chord because it's still going to five. I could do that. But that's not really what's happening because this two chord now won't go to a four chord. This leading tone has to go to the five. What does that look like? If you didn't see this last chord, if I block out the last chord, what does that look like to you guys? If you saw that progression, what would you think that progression was? Just those two chords. Forget the Roman numerals. What do you think that progression is? Does anyone have an idea? Imagine you're not in C major for a second. What does that look like? A one to a four in D major. Uh, it's, say it one more time, Davio. My earphones were not. Go ahead. A one to a four in D major. Um, a one to a four in D major, it could be. That's certainly a possibility because it does look like that. Those would both be major chords. I think more likely it'd be a five to a one in G major, but I like the way you're thinking. I like the way you're thinking. That would be a very typical, it could be a one to four, but as you think of it, it's five to one in G. Oh my gosh, that's just a dominant chord. Remember, dominant chords are always major. And um, if we think about it, it looks like a five to one in G. But I know I'm not a G. I know I'm in C. So what do I call this? Well, what we do is we say that there's a secondary dominant. That is to say, it's like it's a five as if G is one, but we know G isn't one because we're in C, but we pretend it's one for a moment. So we say this is a five if the five were a one. So we call it a five of five, which takes us to a five, which takes us to a one. Oh my gosh, what did I just say? That was the most confusing thing on earth. So we imagine that the five chord is not a five chord, but a, but a one chord. Then we realize that this chord acts just like it's a five in that key. So it's a five of a G. D is five of G, but we're not going to G. We're, because the G is a five of C. So we say we're the key of C, and the G is a five chord, but the one chord is what's called a five of five. It acts like it's a five going to that G. So it's a five not of the of our key, but of our dominant chord. So the dominant chord is treated temporarily like it's a one chord, very temporarily, and the D chord is treated like it's a dominant of that one chord, very temporarily. Are we confused? The silence makes me think we are confused. Ask me some questions or just say, I don't get it at all, or tell me, no, it's clear, go on, go on. I get a one clear, one thumbs up. Um, oh, I see there's stuff in my chat, which I can I have trouble seeing when I'm in finale. So, um, col oh, Sophie, you asked, uh, yes, it's color is the word I want, not colo, color. Color is the word, chromos is the Greek word for color. Okay, so we had some confusion, so. Let's look over here, just playing with some dominant chords for a second. So let's go back to the key of C. If I'm in the key of C, and by the way, this gets confusing for a while, guys, but we will get it. And some of you will get it right away and some will take longer. But this is always the place where people get confused because we don't realize that we could be in a key but sound like we're in another key for a while. And we could also move to a key permanently. That's called modulation, but that's not this chapter. This is just temporary. So let's say I have uh, this chord progression. I'll just write it. I have to write the bass part. C, um, C, G. Um, sorry, that's not what I want to do. I want to do G, C. Circle progression. And the top is, say, 5, 1. So that's five 
going to one in the key of C. We can see that that's five going to one in the key of C, right? And so I'm gonna put that in a little thing here. If I'm in the key of C, that's five, it's going to one. And that's how our ear hears it, five going to one. But how do I know I'm actually in the key of C? What would happen if that was key of F? So let me change it to the key of F for a second. Hold the notes uh, and harmonically. Okay, that's good. Now it's the same progression. But if I'm in the key of F, and there's no way you'd know I'm in the key of F from those two chords, but for the key of F, that can't be 5 1 because the because C is, a, is the key of F, a five chord. But it's exactly the same chord progression. We still hear it as five going to one. Oh my gosh, what a confusion. So now I say, but that, that F chord, that C chord is now a five chord. But this is definitely a five to one. So what I say is it's a five chord, but it doesn't go to one, it goes to five. It acts like it's five in the key. In, in, as if that, sorry, it acts like I'm going to a five in, in the key of C, but the key of C is the five in my key of F. So what we call this is we say that the, fi the five chord has been temporarily tonicized, turned into a tonic. Very good. Now remember, tonic means the first degree of the scale. So that's the five de fifth degree of key of F. I'm going to write this with, a, with an F here so you know I'm an F. We do that to say the key. Whereas in the key above, the same chord was in the key of C. So in the key of C, this is a five chord going to a one. But the key of F, we're going to a five chord. It's the same chord. So we say that this chord has been tonicized. It acts like it's a one chord, but very briefly. So that word, I'll be right back to this screen, guys. Let's go to these. This is... This is a lot of concept here. Um, let's go back to the whiteboard for a second. So what I just did is I took a chord and I made it, I, I tonicized it, tonicized it. So tonicization is the word. It just means that it sounds temporarily like a tonic. And remember, a tonic just means a one chord. That's all it means. When you tonicize a chord, you say temporarily it sounds like one. And a secondary dominant is what we're talking about. Secondary dominant sounds like the dominant of the tonicized chord. So the chord that sounds temporarily like it's a one, then we have a chord that sounds like it's the five of that one. So that's what we have here. The key of C. This is a five going to one. But the key of F, it's not. It's going to five, but it sounds like one. This chord has been temporarily tonicized. It sounds like your one chord. And then this chord sounds like it's the five of that one chord. So the way we notate it is we put a slash. We say it's a five chord, but not in the key of F. It's a five chord as if that five underneath the slash was tonicized, as if it's a one. So it's a five of five, and therefore it should go to the five chord in the, in the base key, key of F. Wow, that was a lot of words. I'm going to look at the chat. Tell me if you're getting it or if you're totally confused or if you're partially confused. I'm looking at the chat now. Everyone send me a private message, a direct message. I will wait till you're all done typing. Okay, so there's some confusion, but it's getting less and less, and people are getting it. And we're going to show a couple of these, and, and they, the pattern may become clear. Some of you have also seen this before. Some of you have had some advanced theory before. But this is a very common chord, and why do we see it? Well, if I'm going from G minor to C, it's a circle progression, so my bass is strong. But nothing else wants to get me to that five chord very easily, so the two chord to five, we're used to it, but it's not as strong. But as soon as I make it a dominant, 
a secondary dominant. I've now got a leading tone going to that as well as the circle progression. Now it's strong. Now this chord really wants to go to that chord. So you're, you're making your progression more powerful and more colorful because you have a chromatic note in it. So this works, and there's a bunch of these. So I start with just five, uh, a five of five. That's the most common. And I do it in major because that's the most common. And we'll just hear it again. And you hear that if the original progression works also, whoops, but it's got a, it doesn't have that leading tone. It's just a two chord. So the two chord... It's a little less okay. strong. Yes. Oh, I'm not sharing anymore, right? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness you said it before I talked for 20 minutes. Okay, let's try this again. So, so here was that original five of five I had. And you could, if you look at it, you see there's a leading tone that wants to go up and there's a bass line going by circle. That's the most powerful bass and that's the most powerful motion. So if I have that five of five to five to one, That's very cool. If I don't have the five of five with that chromatic alteration, then it's a two chord. We still have a circle progression. Two still wants to go to five, but you hear it's not quite as strong. It's a perfectly good and, and happy progression, but the five of five just has a little more strength and has the advantage of having a chromatic note and adds some color. Let's look at a variation on it. We learned last chapter that, oops, I lost my, <laughs> I lost my, my text, so I'll have to retype it. We learned last chapter that we could make it not just a two chord, but in the key, this is the key of C, key of C, we could have a two going with a seven on it, going to a five, seven, to a one. And remember, I can add a seven to any chord, and that's really a beautiful chord. Look at that. But it, terrible voice leading because the seven has to go downward by step. Sorry, guys, FAC. So let me change my voice leading here. Otherwise, I'll embarrass myself. Um, the two, we want the two to go down. So put the D on the bottom. Anyway, because we remember whenever we have twos, whoa, they want to go down by step. So there we have a two seven. It went away again. Why did you go away? So that's a 2-7 to a 5-7 to a 1 in the key of C. Now, what happens if I do the same thing? What happens if I just add a chromatic note to try and give me a little more drive in this thing? So I add my chromatic note, and look what, kinds of what kind of chord I get. Whoops, make it major. Look what kind of chord I get. This chord is a major chord, D, F, A, with a minor 7th. So it's a dominant seventh chord. Wow. So it's a dominant seventh. Talk about a secondary dominant. So even though the five chord, I immediately add my seventh to it. So it's very hard to think of this as a tonic with a minor seventh. But our ear still hears this thing as a dominant seventh chord. So we still find that what we have here um, is... a five seven, this time with the seventh added of five, and then it's going to go to a five seven, which is going to go to a one. And so this is another very common progression because instead of just having a five of five, we have a five seven of five. Why not? We could add a chord as long as it's a major chord with a minor seventh. It sounds like a secondary dominant. And wow, have we heard that progression a ton in our lives. The, o, the C has to go down by step, and then the leading tone goes back up. Here you have a seventh that should go down by step two. So probably should have changed that D going, you know, the voice leading's not perfect, but I'm also not in four-part writing, so it's a little hard to see it. But listen to that. And how cool is it that we have this chromatic alteration to add all this color? But this note now is going to be written differently. Because it's now, uh, it disappeared again, didn't it? Five, seven of five, of five, going to a five, seven, going to a one. Are we totally confused or is this clearer? 
Are we seeing the pattern? I'm looking at the chat. Talk to me. Ask specific questions if you have them. I'm waiting for messages. I'm very patient. Nobody's typing anything to me. No one's saying anything to me. I feel sad. Someone type me something. Let me know you're hearing me. Okay. I get two happy faces. Okay, good. And if you have more questions, do read the book, but then ask me, okay? This is this can be confusing stuff. So let's do another example. I'm not going to do too much of this. I just want, I want to give you some examples and have you practice. There's, there's more complexity that we could find. Um, but basically, we can make it major. But what happens if we already have a major chord, like this one? Here I am with a one chord to a four chord to a five chord to a one chord. If I go backwards, we can see I type that. One chord to a four chord to a five chord to a one chord. Now, that is a circle progression, one to four. So you say, I can make it a secondary dominant. I know how to do that. I just have to make one major. One's already major. Nothing we can do about that. You can't do a five of four with just a major chord. The one chord going to four is normal. The four to five, we can't make a circle. It's not a circle progression. We can't make a secondary dominant out of that because it doesn't go up by a fourth. Then the five to one is already a dominant. So there's a chord progression we can't alter. But what happened if we make them seven chords? So look at my one chord. My one chord is a major chord with a major seventh. So that can't be a secondary dominant. That can't, that isn't right now a secondary dominant because we know a dominant chord requires a major chord with a minor seventh. But we could make that happen. Sure, we could make that happen. All we have to do is change the seventh, make it minor. And now we've created a secondary dominant to the F. So if I write this out in my notation thing here, what I just created was a five, seven of this time of four, because I'm going to four. Five, seven of four going to a four. And then we have a five, seven to one. Then the ending's the same. Because a dominant, can, a secondary dominant can be of any chord. It doesn't have to be a five. So here we have a four chord. And this chord acts like a dominant of four. It's got a major chord with a minor seventh. It's chromatically altered, so it no longer sounds like a one chord. So that sounds like a five, seven to F. F is a four chord in the key of C. So it's a five, seven of four. Therefore, it goes to four, which then will naturally go to a five to a one. Let's hear it. See what it sounds like. Let me get out of that thing so you can also see it. Here we go. We're going to hear it now. And what I love about it is that B flat is a chromatic alteration. That's a B natural in the five seven chord. So you hear a chromatic going down because it's a seventh has to go down to a leading tone going up. And that's really a very colorful progression. And all it required was what accidental. It turns my C7 chord into a secondary dominant because it's a, dom it's a dominant seventh chord, major minor chord, major chord with a minor seventh. Let's hear that again. Here we go. And so there's lots of possibilities of these chords. I'm going to separate these two so we can see them better. So now we find out that we don't have to just go to the dominant. We can go to the subdominant and make it a five of four. But in this case, only if we have a seven other chord because the C major chord's already major. Let's look at another. What if we wanted to go to a six chord? Now, six chord's a minor chord. Can I go to that as a tonic? Sure. A minor exists as a key. 
So remember, three chord naturally goes to six, naturally goes to four, two, naturally goes to five, naturally goes to one. That's just natural. So I can change this. I can make this, the three chord a secondary dominant. All I have to do to do that is make the chord major instead of minor. And look what I get, secondary dominant. Let's hear it. And I could have made any of these chords the secondary dominant. In this case, what I've got is, I'll write it out for you. What I've got right here is just a five, because it's major. It's now sounding like a secondary dominant, a five of the six chord going to the six. And again, the six has been tonicized. It's been turned into sounding like a temporary tonic. And the E major chord sounds like a temporary dominant of that tonic. So that's a five of six. We call this process tonicization. Say that three times real fast. Tonicization. And this is the secondary dominant going to our temporary tonic, which then becomes just a six chord going to a two to a five or one. By the way, all of these are circle progressions, so I could have chosen to make any of them a secondary dominant. Instead of do changing the three chord, I could have changed the six chord and make that major. And when I do that, the A is now major, so the A is the five, and the two is the tonicized chord. So let me rewrite this text. This text is now a regular three chord, but the six chord is now instead a five of two, going to a two, because I've changed this and made it the secondary dominant because I have a circle progression. That's a lot of information. So ask me questions. Ask me lots of questions. Even if you don't know what you're asking, ask me questions. I want to hear questions. Ask them live or put them in the chat. You guys are killing me with no questions. You're killing me. My lecture's only so long. I was expecting questions. Hold on while I take my sweater off. Okay. You're killing me. You're absolutely killing me. All right. So let's just write one of these other words down on the on the uh, whiteboard. I get a thumbs up. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm fine with that, guys. I'm fine. If you get it, I'm happy. I'm thrilled. So the other phrase I just said was we tonicize a chord. The process is called tonicization. I hate that word. In other words, you've made a chord temporarily sound like tonic. And so we need a verb for it. We call it tonicization because the chord itself was tonicized because it was acting like tonic, like a one chord. And so it's just the word we have to know, tonicization, tonicizing a chord to make it sound temporarily like one. The chord before it sounds like the dominant, so it's a secondary dominant. And that's how we add color, which is to say chromos, where we add color by chromatic alterations. That's taking a note that's not in the key. A note that's in the key is called diatonic. Those are lots of definitions in the same lecture. All right, now I've got a lot more to do in this, but I want to say, how do we recognize, if we're doing an analysis, if we're doing looking at a piece of music, how do we recognize that we have a secondary dominant? And the steps are pretty simple, right? The steps are, you will either see a third of a chord sharp, so if, or and sharping, by the way, can be nat can be adding a natural. If this had a B flat, um, let me see if I did this somewhere. Okay, let me like here. Um, I don't think you're sharing. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> I did it again, man alive! I get so caught up, and I'm just so used to using a blackboard. You know, I'll old dogs do tricks. So if you notice that the normal secondary dominance, I sharped the third of the chord. I added a sharp. So if you see a sharp, by the way, and sometimes when we say a sharp, we mean that we took a flat, made it a natural. That's the same thing, right? We're raising half a step. 
So the first thing is you look for accidentals. If you see a sharp or you see a natural, you look to see if it's the third of the chord. If it's the third of the chord, you look to see if the chord is a circle progression. That means that the root of the chord goes up a fourth or down a fifth. If it's a circle progression and we sharp the third, you got a secondary dominant. So basically what you do is you scan a page for accidentals. If you see a chord that stands by itself with a sharp in it, you see if it's the third that's sharp to see if it's a circle progression. And it turns out that it's very, you find it gets very fast and very easy. If you're changing key, you'll see a lot of accidentals, but secondary dominant stands by itself. You say, oh, look at that. I got a, I raised the third of the chord, secondary dominant. So you just look for an accidental. Sometimes when you're in major, like this one, you already have a major key chord. Then what you have to do is flat the seventh to make it a secondary dominant. So sometimes you're looking for a flat that stands alone. Then you're looking for it to be the seventh of the chord, and you're still looking for circle progression. If you find a circle progression with the seventh, or if you're finding a circle progression where the third is raised, or the seventh is lowered, it's almost certainly a secondary dominant. And we're going to do some practice on that later when we actually try to um, we try to, to analyze some progressions. But that's just a trick. We want to know how to find them in music. You're going to find them in hymns a ton of times. Anything in the 19th, early 20th century has got secondary dominance all over the place. Bach has got them in, this, in the late 1700s, or early 1700s, I should say. So they've been around a long time, but there's certain places you see them all the time. If you open up your hymn, hymnal, Look for a sharp or a natural on a chord, and I'm going to guarantee it's a secondary dominant. So next time you're in church, just open the hymnal randomly. You can see a ton of these guys. All right? But basically, we're just trying to either make the, a minor chord major so it can act like a dominant, or make a major chord seventh a minor seventh so it can act as a dominant. And that's all we're doing. All right, guys. So let's do a practice one. I'd like you guys to stay in the key of C. And I write, want you to write 251 in four parts. Just write 251. Don't alter anything. Just write the standard progression of a two chord to a five chord to a one chord in C major. Okay? I'll be right back to answer questions, but it shouldn't take us long. We've done it before, but it's four part harmony. Keep it in root position. Okay? Okay, who's got a two to a five to a one chord progression done yet? Anybody? Okay, give me a thumbs up when you've got it ready.
Professor, I'm not sure if you were saying something, but you're muted. Oh, my gosh. I am so off today, guys. I'm so sorry. So what I was saying was, okay, I just made, I have a key seizure that's wrong, but I quickly made my D to G to C. So now what I'd like you to do is take your version of a D chord. Mine's not great because it's open spacing, but oh well. And change it so we have to tonicize the G chord. And the way we tonicize the G chord, the way we make it feel like it's a tonic is we have to make the chord before it act like a dominant. And to do that, we have to make one change in it to make this chord. So make the change and give me a thumbs up. What's the change we have to make in the D chord, the two chord, to make it a dominant? I got one person's done it. Okay, so I'll walk everyone else through it. So to make it a dominant, dominant chords are major chords because they have this leading tone. And so you have to take your two chord, which is a minor chord, and make it a major chord. And all you have to do is raise the third. So if D is the root, F is the third, all we have to do is add an F sharp. Now we've done a chromatic alteration, so this is now an altered chord. It's a major chord, it, that's a circle progression. So it acts like it's a dominant of the five chord, of the G chord. So that's the only change we have to make to make this a secondary dominant. It's actually very easy. And when we do that, we just change the notation. Instead of calling it a two chord, we say it's a five chord of five, a secondary dominant of five. The tonicized chord is the five. And then that takes you to the one. Should we do another? We have very little time, but we can do another. Let's try another quickly. Let's try a six to a two to a five. Just a six to a two to a five in C major. Six to a two to a five in C major. I'll do it while you do it. I'll throw this, this C in there too while I'm at it. Why not? Is a C. I don't know. Everyone else out there is done? Mine isn't very good. Okay, so we're kind of out of time. So, so if I wanted to make that A a secondary dominant, what would I change, guys? If I wanted to make the D sound like a tonic, how would I change my A, my A chord? Shout it out, guys. Change to C sharp. Yeah, you will have an A minor, so you've got to change it to A major. So we make a C sharp. There it is. C sharp now makes this a five of two. So we have a five of two to two to five to one. Because that's my two chord has now been tonicized. So this is a five slash two, which is as five of two going to two, the my tonicized chord, which takes me to five to one. 
All right. You have a whole weekend to think about all the questions you have or if you completely understand. I think we love this. So, guys, have a wonderful weekend, a safe and wonderful Sabbath, and I see you on Monday. All right? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.